the use of insurance by international businesses and multinational companies. Welcome to the Risk Management of Everything channel. On this channel, you will see videos on risk management and the application of risk management to diverse areas and sectors. If you are new here, make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the notification button so you can be notified when we upload new videos. Thank you. This video discusses the use of insurance by international businesses and multinational companies with practical case studies. In this video, we discussed the factors that influence global insurance program decisions, options available to global insurance buyers, the use of global insurance programs, the issues surrounding the authorization of insurers, the impact of the reinsurance sector on a global insurance program, the role of captive insurers in global risk financing, and issues surrounding the management of international claims. Now, let us start. What is a multinational corporation, MNC? A multinational corporation, MNC, is a company that operates in its home country and other countries around the world. It maintains a central office located in one country, which coordinates the management of all its other offices, such as administrative branches or factories. Multinational companies are international businesses that operate in several states or countries. Multinational companies are global business organizations that undertake and manage business activities with significant investment across national boundaries. Multinational companies are also known as transnational corporations. It is not enough to refer to a company that exports its products to more than one country as a multinational company. They need to maintain actual business operations in other countries and must make a foreign direct investment there. In this video, we will be using corporation and company interchangeably. Characteristics of a multinational corporation Here are the characteristics of multinational corporations. 1. Very high assets and turnover. To become a multinational corporation, the business must be large and must own a vast amount of assets, both physical and financial. The company's targets are high, and they can generate substantial profits. 2. Network of branches. Multinational companies maintain production and marketing operations in different countries. In each country, the business may oversee multiple offices that function through several branches and subsidiaries. 3. Control. The management of offices in other countries is controlled by one head office located in the home country. Therefore, the source of command is in the home country. 4. Continued growth. Multinational corporations keep growing. Even as they operate in other countries, they strive to increase their economic size by constantly upgrading and conducting mergers and acquisitions. 5. Sophisticated technology. When a company goes global, they need to make sure that their investment will grow substantially. To achieve substantial growth, they need to use capital-intensive technology, especially in their production and marketing activities. 6. Right skills. Multinational companies aim to employ only the best managers, those capable of handling large amounts of funds, using advanced technology, managing workers, and running a vast business entity. 7. Effective marketing and advertising. One of the multinational corporation's most effective survival strategies is spending a great deal of money on marketing and advertising. This is how they can sell every product or brand they make. 8. Good quality products. Because they use capital intensive technology, they can produce top of the line products. How do multinational companies transact business? Multinational companies can transact business in the following ways 1. Exportation of goods and services. 2. Obtaining a license from the host nation to produce goods in the local community. 3. Production and distribution of goods through a branch in the host nation. 4. Mergers and acquisition. And 5. Provision of managerial services to firms in the host nation. Reasons for being a multinational corporation. There are several reasons why companies want to become multinational corporations. Here are some of the most common motivations. 1. Access to lower production costs. 
Setting up production in other countries, especially in developing economies, usually means spending significantly less on production costs. Though outsourcing is a way of achieving the objective, setting up manufacturing plants in other countries may be even more cost efficient. Due to their large size, multinational companies can take advantage of economies of scale and grow their global brand. The growth is done through strategic manufacturing and service placement, allowing the corporation to take advantage of undervalued services across the globe, more efficient and inexpensive supply chains, advanced technology, and research and development R&D, capacity. 2. Proximity to target international markets. It is beneficial to set up business in countries where the target consumer market of a company is located. Doing so helps reduce transport costs and gives multinational corporations easier access to consumer feedback and information, as well as to consumer intelligence. International brand recognition makes the transition from different countries and their respective markets more accessible and decreases per capita marketing costs as the same brand strategy can be applied worldwide. 3. Access to a larger talent pool. Multinational corporations are also known to hire only the best talent worldwide, which allows management to provide the best technical knowledge and innovative thinking to their product or service. 4. Avoidance of tariffs. When a company produces or manufactures its P products in another country where they sell their products, they are exempt from import quotas and tariffs. Models of multinational companies. Here are the different models of multinational companies. 1. Centralized. In the centralized model, companies put up an executive headquarters in their home country and then build various manufacturing plants and production facilities in other countries. Its most important advantage is avoiding tariffs and import quotas and taking advantage of lower production costs. 2. Regional. The regionalized model states that a company keeps its headquarters in one country that supervises a collection of offices in other countries. Unlike the centralized model, the regionalized model includes subsidiaries and affiliates that all report to the headquarters. 3. Multinational. In the multinational model, a parent company operates in the home country and subsidiaries in different countries. The difference is that the subsidiaries and affiliates are more independent in their operations. Advantages of being a multinational company There are many benefits of being a multinational corporation, including 1. Efficiency In terms of efficiency, multinational companies can reach their target markets more quickly because they manufacture in the countries where the target markets are. Also, they can easily access raw materials and cheaper labor costs. 2. Development. In terms of development, multinational corporations pay better than domestic companies, making them more attractive to the local labor force. The local government usually favors them because of the substantial amount of local taxes they pay, which helps boost the country's economy. 3. Employment. In terms of employment, Multinational corporations hire local workers who know the culture of their place and are thus able to give helpful insider feedback on what the locals want. 4. Innovation. As multinational corporations employ both locals and foreign workers, they can come up with more creative and innovative products. Foreign direct investment. Foreign direct investments are prevalent within multinational corporations. Investments occur when an investor or company from one country invests in the country of operation. Foreign investments most often occur when a foreign business is established or bought outright. Foreign investments can be distinguished from purchasing an international portfolio that only contains the company's equities rather than purchasing more direct control. Risk management and insurance issues of multinational businesses. Almost every company with a website is potentially exposed to liability from foreign sources. Even if it does little or no business in a foreign country, since the internet is borderless, the company could run afoul of various libel, intellectual property infringement and privacy laws. Companies that sell products to foreign buyers have even more opportunities to incur liability, 
such as product liability lawsuits and enforcement of consumer protection laws. Companies with physical locations outside their home country face the full range of property and liability exposures in each country in which they have facilities and people. Understanding the exposures presented by each country in which a company operates can be daunting. Liability exposures are incredibly challenging since laws and legal systems vary widely. Reforms in many parts of the world provide consumers, employees, and investors with greater access to the courts, leading to increased exposure to lawsuits. Foreign companies may be especially exposed to suits due to a lack of awareness of, or sensitivity to, local laws, customs, and practices. Foreign companies also may become the targets of enforcement actions from regulators and law enforcement agencies. Companies with only minimal foreign involvement may adequately ensure foreign exposures with a single policy providing worldwide coverage. However, that is certainly not the correct answer if foreign subsidiaries, branch offices, and manufacturing facilities are to be insured. In many countries, local admitted insurance policies are necessary. Often, admitted policies are required by law. If a claim occurs in a country requiring an admitted policy and the company has only a global non-admitted policy, the foreign operating entity may be barred from receiving recoveries from the non-admitted policy. Additionally, companies may face regulatory actions for failing to maintain compulsory admitted insurance or buying insurance from an insurer not licensed in the country. Even if not required by law, local policies may be a good idea in many cases. Local policies are more likely to be tailored to local laws and practices, and ready access to local claims personnel may be essential following a loss. Additionally, buying local policies may avoid certain complex tax issues associated with multinational policies. Companies may stitch together an insurance program comprised entirely of policies purchased in each country in which they have operations. Under this option, policies are purchased from local carriers according to local customs and regulations, and premiums and losses are paid in local currency. Companies may delegate insurance purchases to local offices to ease access to the local insurance market and manage language and business customs issues more effectively. Local employees, however, may have little expertise in insurance matters. Additionally, a patchwork of local policies is likely to result in uneven coverage that may fail to meet corporate risk management standards, resulting in unintended shortfalls and gaps in protection. Companies may also be compelled to rely on local insurers that do not meet minimum corporate financial strength and security standards. The use of insurance by multinational companies Insurance for multinational companies will involve cross-border financial transactions. These transactions will have legal, transfer pricing and tax implications. There is no one-size-fits-all approach. International companies will tailor solutions and services offer to the need of each country of operation. The need for an auditable range of documentation is necessary. To demonstrate that multinational companies are engaging in purchasing insurance policies to manage their risks, let us see the result of Aon Risk Survey 20138, Global Risk Management Survey 2018. The Global Risk Management Survey 2018 shows that claims service and claim settlement are vital factors considered by organizations in the choice of insurers. After all, the ultimate purpose of an insurance policy is the promise to pay for a covered loss. Financial stability was ranked second on the list, followed by value for money. This shows that pricing concerns are affected by an interest in dealing with carriers who have the financial capacity to pay claims and meet minimum financial rating demand within contracts and corporate policies. The results of Aon Risk Survey 2018 revealed that many business organizations managed their risks by purchasing insurance products. Hence, we should ask ourselves this question, why might multinational companies be very keen to use insurers in their home country and be very reluctant to use insurers in host countries? This question and other similar questions will be addressed later in this video. Risk Transfer Through Insurance why would multinational companies transfer their risk through insurance? 
The benefit of insurance is a significant factor influencing the use of insurance by multinational companies to manage their risks. Benefits of insurance as a risk transfer technique include 1. May be suitable based multinational companies' risk attitude and appetite. 2. They have a legal, insurable interest in their subsidiaries and joint ventures. 3. Spread of risk and reinsurance support. 4. Introduces a degree of certainty over loss financing. 5. Facilitate access to insurers' expertise, and 6. There may be compulsory elements. Disadvantages of insurance products to multinational companies. 1. Price and availability may vary. 2. It might not be encouraging in terms of exploring other risk management techniques. 3. Insurers include profit margin and operating expenses in their charges. 4. Cost of risk issues. 5. May increase the cost of financing events that have high frequency and low severity. 6. Wider insurance market issues. 7. However, the most significant potential hurdles are regulatory and tax based. 8. The use of conventional insurance as a risk financing method by large multinational companies has reduced over the past 20 years. 9. However, it is still the predominant method and represents a global market measured in billions of pounds or dollars. 10. Very few multinational companies may completely avoid using, at least, some forms of insurance to manage their risks. Key considerations for a multinational company insurance program. As your business expands across time zones and borders, your opportunity for growth and prosperity increases, as does your risk exposure. How will you protect your company? What are your options? The opportunities? The potential obstacles? The reality is that there is more than one way to build an effective multinational insurance program. Multinational insurers provide three different policy options depending on an organization's peculiarity and need, namely, local insurance policies, a single global insurance policy, and a controlled master program. However, the first step is to assess the risks a multinational company might encounter regarding exposure, coverage, compliance, proof of insurance, claims, and corporate tax. Before multinational companies purchase insurance products, the following questions should be addressed. 1. Exposure evaluation, the greater the exposures, the greater the need for local insurance protection. What products and services do you provide? What type of physical presence do you have? What are the organization's risk exposures, and where are they located? What lines of insurance are you considering? What contractual counterparties do you have? 2. Coverage, a global policy for local risks. Are there particular insurance terms and conditions that local operations need to be adequately protected? What level of insurance cover is appropriate, and where should that cover be purchased? Are the necessary terms and conditions available only under a local policy? Are there any country-related factors that impact policy wordings? How are premiums allocated across subsidiaries and countries, and what will be the charging mechanism? Should the company consider using captive insurance? 3. Compliance, a multinational's regulatory and premium tax requirements. Does local law require the local subsidiary to be covered by insurance from a locally licensed carrier? Does local law prohibit the local subsidiary from purchasing and be covered by insurance from a carrier not locally licensed? Will the parent company need to settle and pay premium tax in the local subsidiary's country? 4. Proof of insurance, this ensures satisfying local authorities. Are local operations required to obtain insurance from locally licensed carriers? Does a contractual counterparty or government entity need to be shown evidence that coverage has been obtained locally? Will failure to provide evidence of locally obtained insurance breach contractual covenants or trigger any commercial, contractual, or reputational consequences? 5. Claims, 
This is necessary because of the need to respond locally. Where will the claims be paid, and what will be the implications of this? Can the local subsidiary retain local counsel to defend a lawsuit? Will the subsidiary retain loss control experts, engineers, and medical providers to assist in the claim adjusting process? Will the subsidiary retain investigators, search for beneficiaries or arrange for housing or other accommodations in the wake of a loss? Will the subsidiary be able to arrange for immediate medical treatment and evacuation? 6. Corporate tax, tax liability and capital. What are the tax implications of premium allocation, claims payments, transfer pricing and premium tax? Will the claim need to be paid in country, and what will be the implications of this? If the global policy cannot respond by paying the claim locally and must instead pay the parent company, will it incur a tax liability in its home country? Will the parent company need to make a capital contribution to the local subsidiary? If so, will the local subsidiary incur tax liability? Can the local operation survive if the parent company does not infuse capital to make it whole for a loss? Having discussed the six considerations for a multinational insurance program, it is essential to emphasize that there is not just one right way to build an international program. Understanding local regulation is necessary, but this should not be the main factor when designing a program. The organization must continue to follow basic risk management principles. Although multinational companies' exposures are foreign, the risk management principles for addressing the company's exposures are not the same. If the decision is not to purchase a local policy, all stakeholders should know the potential pitfalls and limitations. Insurance Analysis for Multinational Companies Insurance is a risk transfer tool and a valuable asset to multinational companies. Certain coverages, however, are not purchased or pursued by multinational companies transacting business globally because there are critical differences between local and international insurance programs and law. Insurance companies with global offices will be best served by having experienced in international insurance operations. Such companies would identify potential coverage gaps and better plan and negotiate favorable coverage terms before a loss arises. Let us discuss practical insurance analysis for multinational companies. 1. What risks does your business face, and are you insured for such losses? At the most basic level, a company must consider the risks it potentially faces and the assets it must protect and then optimize the structure of its insurance program accordingly. Different policies cover different types of risk, for example, general liability, property damage, directors, and officers liability. It is imperative to understand how your insurance program will operate in the event of a loss. Consider whether any assets remain unprotected. Think broadly, not all assets are tangible. For example, companies have recognized the exposure they face to network and data security breaches. The cyber insurance market has skyrocketed, but cyber policies are far from uniform. There is room for negotiation. Know what you need and what you don't so that you can negotiate effectively for what you want. 2. Will your policy's limits of liability protect your business? Consider whether your insurance policy's liability limits adequately cover the company's specific business and plan for the worst. Pay attention to sublimits. For example, a first-party property policy may have much smaller limits for events, such as floods or storms. Would your business have adequate property, liability, and business interruption coverage and limits if a loss were to occur? Depending on the size of the organization, companies may have many different layers of insurance, for example, primary, umbrella and excess policies. The umbrella and excess policies supplement the dollar amount of coverage afforded by primary policies by providing coverage above the primary coverage limits. Once your primary policy is exhausted, these umbrella or excess layers of insurance should provide additional coverage. Umbrella and excess policies sometimes allow insurers to offer coverage at lower premiums by permitting insurers to diversify their risks, thereby limiting their exposure.
Operating in the United States can be challenging because the liability landscape can be vastly different from other countries. Knowing your business, the liability risks it faces, the states in which it operates, as well as the various regulatory schemes governing its operations and markets can help you identify the correct types and L limits of insurance you need. Speak with your broker and qualified counsel to help you identify these risks and how to both mitigate and transfer them. 3. Have you complied with state-specific insurance mandates? Some businesses are statutorily required to purchase certain types of insurance. For example, workers' compensation and automobile liability insurance are usually mandatory, and these policies are intended to benefit third parties rather than the company directly. Unlike most other forms of insurance, a company's insurance needs may vary state by state. A company that fails to abide by the applicable statutory framework may face steep fines and penalties. Not only must a company consider what risks it seeks to protect, but it must also understand the state-specific differences in insurance law. When considering your insurance program and negotiating a policy renewal, understand how relevant insurance policies have been interpreted. Understanding your company's policies terms can save time and money in the event of a loss. Work closely with your insurance broker and a coverage lawyer to ensure that your risk transfer mechanisms will work efficiently and effectively when you need them. Management of multinational companies' insurance programs. In a globalized economy linked by overnight delivery, advanced telecommunications and the internet, even small companies increasingly do business with foreign suppliers and customers. Conducting business outside one's home country has never been easier, but doing so leads to a wide array of risk management and insurance issues. Companies with foreign subsidiaries, branches or joint ventures especially need to be aware of their exposure to loss in the various countries in which they do business. They need to be sure that their insurance programs are appropriate to the vulnerabilities and comply with local regulations. Failure to do so may leave a company without insurance coverage, which may not become apparent until after a loss has occurred, and potentially subject to fines and penalties. Managing a multinational insurance program can be enormously complicated. Some countries require policies to be purchased locally, meaning that the buyer needs access to distant insurance markets and must manage language issues, primarily since the policies are often issued in the local language. One solution is to delegate local insurance purchases to local employees, but this can lead to other issues concerning the quality and consistency of coverages. Companies doing business outside their home countries can materially simplify the process by working with brokers experienced in international insurance programs and multinational insurers that can provide substantially one-stop service, even when local insurance policies are required. Basic Insurance Options for Multinational Companies Basic insurance options for multinational companies include 1. By locally in every country in which they have a risk exposure, relatively uncommon. 2. By a global policy in their home country to cover all the risks in all the countries, with no local policies, much less standard than it once was. 3. Utilize a combination of both, increasingly common, and. 4. Do not buy insurance at all, uncommon. The Controlled Master Insurance Program Alternative to assure complete and uniform coverage wherever they do business abroad, many companies opt for a combination of a policy providing worldwide coverage outside their home country and local policies, what is known as a controlled master program. Under this approach, locally admitted policies are supplemented by difference in conditions, DIC, and difference in limits, DIL, policies purchased by the Corporate Risk Management Department. Difference in conditions, DIC, and difference in limits, DIL, policies are extensions of the local policy, providing additional limits of liability if coverage under the local policy is insufficient. It will also fill coverage gaps in local policies or when a combination of local policies fails to address an exposure fully. Where no local policies exist, DIC and DIL policies provides primary coverages. Under most scenarios, Premiums and losses are paid in the countries where the exposures are located through local policies. 
tactic and dill policies rarely come into play, but if shortfalls or gaps occur, it is available. A controlled master program purchased from a large multinational insurer provides several administrative benefits and coverage benefits. Dick and Dill policies as well as the local essential policies can be purchased as a package, thereby eliminating the need to buy coverage locally on a country-by-country -country basis. The multinational insurance company is typically responsible for staying abreast of local insurance requirements and assuring that the program fulfills the requirements of each country in which coverage is provided. The insurer typically handles the premium allocation and payment. Additionally, while local claims adjusters may be employed, claims can be coordinated centrally. Global Insurance Programs Multinational companies prefer to purchase global insurance packages to cover their homogeneous risk exposures across all locations or countries where they operate. This is beneficial because it saves time and reduces administrative expenses. Global insurance programs are also known as coordinated global insurance programs and controlled master programs. Multinational companies often prefer international operations to have global insurance packages because they can optimize. 1. Consistency. 2. Legality. 3. Control. Local managers may lack appropriate knowledge. 4. Economies of scale and leverage, and 5. The complete overview of losses. Content of global insurance packages. What are the likely required covers for multinational companies? Generally, GL Global insurance packages for multinational companies are in three categories, property, liability, and other insurance packages. Property insurance packages. Multinational companies' property insurance packages may include the following covers, all risks, fire, theft, marine, terrorism and war risk, fraud and dishonesty goods in transit, business interruption, and motor risks. Natural catastrophe cover may be granted, subject to individual risk assessment because such risk is highly sensitive and problematic. Liability and casualty insurance packages. Multinational companies are increasingly vulnerable to these risks. Liability insurance packages for multinational companies may include the following covers, employees, public, products, motor, professional negligence, and environmental hazards. Others insurance packages. Insurance protections not covered by the property and liability insurance packages, can be covered within the other insurance package. The cover afforded in this package includes accident and sickness, repatriation, kidnap and extortion, political risk, product contamination, legal costs, and country and region specific risks. The Multinational Companies Wish List Generally, multinational companies often aim at ensuring consistency, operational efficiency, financial efficiency, and compliance. However, almost all countries have strict and varied rules on 1. Licensing of insurers 2. The legal aspects of insurance policies and their wording 3. Taxation on both premiums and claims, and 4. Transfer pricing arrangements. The enforcement of regulation has become much more rigorous. These are often tackled by using a global insurance program purchased in the multinational company's home country. Reasons for buying insurance in the host country. As discussed earlier, multinational companies prefer to purchase global insurance packages to cover their homogeneous risk exposures. This is beneficial because it saves time and reduces administrative expenses. Multinational companies may, however, decide to buy purchase insurance in the host country. Reasons why multinational companies would buy insurance in the host country include 1. It may be a legal requirement. 2. It may be politically expedient. 3. If the insurance represents a closer connection between the cost of risk the cost of risk financing and local risk management requirements. 4. Tax and claims payment problems may be less likely to arise, and 5. Multinational companies will be able to rely on their brokers and insurers to make the purchases. Meanwhile, the local insurance market may be problematic for various reasons, including 
1. Transitional economies may only recently have moved from the state ownership of insurance. 2. In all types of developing economies, capacity may be limited partially due to reinsurance difficulties. 3. Solvency may be problematic and lacking in transparency. 4. Fragmented pure casing reduces economies of scale benefits, and 5. It does not promote holistic risk management, an enterprise risk management, ERM. Global insurance programs influencing factors. Factors that should be considered for a global insurance package's contract include 1. What are the insurable risks, and how do these differ from the domestic insurable risks? 2. What is their multinational corporation's risk appetite, and is this consistent across all territories, subsidiaries, and joint ventures? 3. Is there a role for export credit guarantee insurance? 4. Areas of operation, for example, insurance purchasing for an EU-based company operating only in EU or African countries, is relatively straightforward. Buying out with the European Union and Africa is complex. Concerning global insurance programs administration, the following should be well coordinated. 1. Authorization. 2. Compulsory insurances. 3. Taxation. 4. Local conditions. 5. Content of global packages, and 6. It is difficult to coordinate all risk factors of a global insurance program thoroughly. Authorization admitted, or licensed, insurance. Admitted, or licensed, insurance refers to the insurance written by a licensed and registered company to transact business in the country where the risk is located. This might be an insurer in the multinational company's domicile or an insurer based in the host country. Government attitudes to licensing foreign insurers vary, depending on regulatory and licensing requirements in the host country. Advantages of admitted insurance Benefits of admitted insurance include 1. Legal 2. Use of a host country insurer may maximize 3. Good corporate citizenship 4. Access to local pools 5. Transaction in local language and currency, and 6. Tax deductibility of premiums and losses paid without a tax penalty. Disadvantages of admitted insurance. These relate mainly to using an admitted insurance based in the host, and not the home, country, for example. 1. Possible tariffs. 2. Language and policy conditions. 3. Restricted coverage. 4. Fronting has additional costs. 5. Solvency and capacity issues, and 6. Lack of central control by a multinational firm's risk management. Non-admitted insurance. Non-admitted insurance refers to a policy written in one country that covers exposures in other countries by an insurer whom the latter's government does not authorize. Typically, Non-admitted insurances are arranged in a multinational firm's home country to cover risks in host countries. Generally, no local policy will be issued. Non-admitted insurance can be permitted, that is, not illegal, but not legally recognized or non-permitted, that is, illegal. However, permitted non-admitted insurance has become increasingly uncommon in the global insurance markets. Advantages of non-admitted insurance include 1. Wider and more consistent cover. 2. Easier administration and management of claims. 3. No language, interpretation, and currency problems. 4. Known jurisdiction. And 5. Theoretically, the avoidance of local premium and other taxes. Disadvantages of non-admitted insurance. Disadvantages of non-admitted insurance include. 1. Negative tax implications. 2. Even permitted non-admitted will have numerous regulatory obstacles. 3. Illegal policies can present significant financial and capital-based challenges. 4. Regulators in various countries are now much more curious about the insurance arrangements of multinational companies. 5. Claims settlements and recoveries can be highly problematic, for example, 
Few countries allow a non-admitted insurer to submit claims directly to a company in that country that has sustained a loss. Types of Global Insurance Programs There are three types of global insurance programs. 1. Fully, or locally, admitted program. 2. Non-admitted program, and 3. Combined program. The type of a global insurance program will impact the authorization system and enforcement regulation. A fully admitted program may utilize fronting. To demonstrate how fronting works, let us see an example of possible non-admitted issues. Example of non-admitted insurance challenges. A United Kingdom multinational company has a crucial subsidiary manufacturing plant in India valued at £15 million. The Indian government do not allow non-admitted insurers to cover such risks, so the multinational firm purchased insurance in the local market. However, the maximum cover the firm can purchase locally is £10 million due to capacity issues. The factory was destroyed in a fire, and the Indian insurer paid £10 million. How was the remainder financed? The obvious answer is the parent company. However, by simply handing over £5 million, the Indian tax authorities will likely ask any awkward questions. Could the parent company have bought insurance in the United Kingdom to cover such a shortfall? The answer to that is yes, but again there are significant considerations regarding the tax implications. Crucial to these implications will be how the transfer pricing arrangements between the multinational company and its Indian subsidiary will be determined. The fronting involvement, in this case, makes it more complicated. How does fronting work? Many insurers refer to fronting as partnering. The multinational companies, MNC, insurer is non-admitted in various countries, but the MNC wants to be compliant. The insurer issues a master policy, but local insurers agree to issue policies in non-admitted countries as part of that. In developed insurance markets, these local policies may be acceptable. In less developed markets, they may not meet the multinational companies or the insurer's standards. A combination policy often tackles this. Combination Insurance Program A combination insurance program is a mixture of local admitted programs support in non-admitted difference in conditions, DIC, and difference in limits, DIL, policy. Tick and DIL are often written on a contingency basis, that is, the premium payable depends on the settlement on the policy. This may involve a significant degree of fronting. Advantages of combination programs include 1. Legally compliant 2. Coverage is maximized 3. Fits well with corporate risk management Disadvantages of combination programs include 1. Time-consuming 2. Complex 3. Unforeseen difficulties in interactions between local and dic slash dil regulations and policies, for example, tax and transfer pricing. Compulsory insurances. One major area of difficulty on the use of insurance by multinational companies is that of compulsory insurance. Compulsory insurance requirements vary in different countries globally, but virtually all countries have one or more mandatory insurance requirements that international firms should purchase locally. Common compulsory insurances across the world include Liability for personal injury, especially motor and employees. Fire insurance on certain classes of business, and Third-party liability for property damage and financial loss. Key risk assessment questions for compulsory insurance include 1. What are the compulsory insurances, and what are their compliance rules? 2. How fluid is the country's approach to them, for example, China's recent moves to make environmental insurance compulsory. 3. Are there exemptions? 4. Must they be placed locally with an authorized company? Tax implications of insurance for multinational companies. Taxation is a significant and increasing problem on the purchase of insurance by multinational companies. One of the taxation problems centers on how are premium payments and claims payments between parent and subsidiaries affected by tax rules. Taxation of foreign insurers may be discriminating, 
discriminatory taxes, or non-discriminating, non-discriminatory taxes. Non-discriminatory taxation ensures that the same tax regime applies to all insurers, regardless of the country of origin and domicile. Discriminatory taxes tend to favor some insurers, mostly home insurers, giving them unfair advantages over other insurers, including foreign insurers. Discriminatory taxes regime may be in the form of unfair regulations against foreign insurers on premium tax and profit tax, no tax relief against premiums paid, and increased cost of transacting business with a foreign insurer. Reluctance of host countries to accept foreign insurance policies. Some of the reasons why governments of multinational firms in the host countries may be reluctant to accept policies issued by foreign insurers. Two primary reasons may be responsible for the reluctance, financial and operational factors. Financial factor, the primary reason for the reluctance to accept foreign insurers is financial ground, including solvency, capacity, and limited access to the reinsurance market. Operational factor, this is another crucial reason for the redundancy to accept foreign insurers, including lack of experience and sophistication, poor insurance market infrastructure, and restrictive terms and conditions. The influence of reinsurers. Reinsurance is integral to the insurance market. Reinsurance is an extension of insurance as reinsurers act as insurers to insurance companies. Reinsurers' actions impact all buyers of insurance. However, their actions are more keenly, and more immediately, felt by large-scale buyers such as multinational companies. The main impacts are likely to be cost, availability, and terms and conditions. Captive insurers. Multinational companies can set up captive insurance. A captive insurance company is an insurance subsidiary of a non-insurance entity or parent and is owned by the insured. Captive insurance companies are formed to supplement commercial insurance, allowing companies to retain the money otherwise spent on insurance premiums. Multinational companies own most captives. A captive insurer is a subsidiary formed to insure loss exposures of its parent company, or companies, and affiliates whose primary purpose is to reduce the parent's cost of risk. Captive insurance is an attractive alternative to self-insurance. Captives are essentially a form of self-insurance whereby the insurer is owned wholly by the insured. Once established, the captive operates like any commercial insurer. A captive insurer issues policies, collects premiums, and depays claims but does not offer public insurance. Captive insurance is an attractive alternative to self-insurance. It is regulated as a captive rather than as a traditional insurer. A captive insurer is a subsidiary formed to insure loss exposures of its parent company, or companies, and affiliates whose primary purpose usually is to reduce the parent's cost of risk. Generally, a captive insurer is an insurance company that is wholly owned and controlled by its insureds. Its primary purpose is to insure the risks of its owners, and its insureds benefit from the captive insurer's underwriting profits. You may see our video on captive insurance and captive insurance plans to learn more about captive insurance. Management of multinational companies' insurance claims. Claims administration and management is another delicate aspect of the insurance of multinational firms' risk exposures. Some problematic elements of international claims include 1. International interpretation of contracts, for example, implicit and explicit conditions. 2. Does domicile, that is, the host country, principles apply globally? 3. Litigation, for example, time, cost, expertise, impartiality. 4. Enforcement of judgments, for example, the existence of agreements likely costs. Property claims may prove difficult, but international liability claims are likely to be even more problematic in legal systems and procedures, levels of awards, and legal costs. Global programs provide multinational companies with greater control over how claims are managed, with two significant implications. 
First, while these situations often require collaborative decision-making involving stakeholders at the headquarters and local levels, the corporate risk manager is better positioned to guide the overall strategy and the options for managing different claims when the losses are covered in a global program. That can include, for instance, deciding whether the claim needs to be resolved as quickly and expeditiously as possible or if a more deliberative approach is warranted. Also, with significant claims where the damages are substantial, the client often must consider a range of alternatives and potential trade-offs. For example, are some increased working costs justified so that production can be resumed as soon as possible? Or should improvements in the protection systems be installed right away or deferred until the next scheduled maintenance interval? Second, whether the payouts are made to the local subsidiary or corporate center, the risk manager will have considerable authority over how and where the claims payments are used. For example, they may stipulate that some of the funds be used to implement specific loss prevention measures, especially those that have been effective in other parts of the company. And in instances where a facility has been severely damaged, the risk manager, in conjunction with colleagues at the corporate headquarters, M, A decide that it makes more sense to direct some if not all the payouts to other parts of the business instead of using the funds to restore slash replace the operation. Challenges in global insurance and international claims. Multinational organizations have become mighty entities in the 21st century. Many companies have business interests that are spread across hundreds of countries. Given the global nature of such companies, it is the only rationale for some of these companies to want a global insurance provider. These companies want to standardize the insurance experience for each of their subsidiaries. However, achieving the same is not easy. Both insurer and multinational companies encounter several obstacles with making international claims. Let us discuss challenges in the global insurance and international claims. 1. Master versus local insurance. Global companies want to deal with one insurance partner. Since their business is so widespread, it can become highly complex for them to have different insurance partners at all their locations. They do not have the time or the resources to deal with multiple insurance partners. Hence, they end up appointing one insurance company as the master service provider. All their communications are routed via the master insurance company. This master service provider, on the other hand, has the responsibility of finding local service providers which can best meet the needs of the global company. In most cases, master service providers and local insurance companies can function as one unit and provide seamless customer service. However, there might be disputes between local companies and master companies in other cases, which may affect the quality of services offered to the global company. It is, therefore, essential to select a reputed master service provider. The master insurance company has a vital role to play since it must augment local policies so that a consistent experience can be provided to the insured. Experienced master insurers can make global insurance much less stressful than it otherwise turns out to be. 2. Legal Differences It needs to be understood that insurance is a highly regulated business all around the world. However, this regulation is not homogenous and differs from place to place. Therefore, many legal differences make it challenging to provide a consistent insurance experience. Also, these differences do not have to be across continents. Within Europe itself, there is a huge difference in the regulations. Countries like France have a different set of rules as compared to England or Spain. 3. Dispute Resolution The insurance contract between the master service provider and the insured mentions the jurisdiction of the agreement. Hence, it also says the exact court or arbitrator that needs to be used in a dispute between two parties. Problems arise when the master service providers deal with multiple local service providers. The result is a W web of contracts that are highly muddled up. The exact jurisdiction of these contracts is difficult to determine, creating room for more disputes. As far as the insured is concerned, they expect the settlement from the master service provider. Other arguments are between the master service providers and the local insurers. However, things are not so simple. 
Sometimes, in the event of a catastrophe, the master service provider may be bankrupt and hence dealing with local insurers and solving their disputes may also become necessary. Four Parties involved. When an international claim is made, multiple parties get involved in the process. For instance, insurance adjusters from local as well as the master insurance company may get involved. Also, local departments such as the police and fire brigade may be affected. It is also common for other parties such as forensic accountants and auditors to get involved. In the event of a dispute, multiple law firms may also get involved in the process. Each of these parties ultimately wants to have a look at the same set of documents. Different parties may end up reaching different conclusions leading to further disputes which may be challenging to resolve. There have been many cases where various parties have presented wildly different interpretations of the same contract in court. In general, as the number of parties increases, so does the complication involved with the contract. 5. Communication. Communication is also crucial while handling international claims. Users in local offices need to be trained appropriately. They should know what to expect and who to contact when an event related to insurance occurs. They are also supposed to know important paperwork and necessary loss mitigation to ensure that the insurance company has required before the claim settlement. 6. Lack of infrastructure. Providing a seamless global experience becomes even more complicated when a catastrophe occurs. In the event of a flood or an earthquake, the resources required by insurance companies are challenging to come by. For instance, the adjusters needed to verify the extent of the damage may not be available for many days since they are overworked. This usually happens in developing countries where the infrastructure related to insurance is not that well developed. This causes unnecessary delays, one of the significant reasons global companies feel dissatisfied after buying global insurance coverage. Finally, global insurance and international claim settlements are fields with numerous, and there is room for improvement. Case Study of a Multinational Company Insurance Claims In 2009, a fire occurred at an Adidas warehouse in India. The parent company had purchased insurance globally from an insurer non admitted to India. The parent company received $20 million from the insurer and remitted $10 of that to the Indian subsidiary. Adidas India claimed that the payment was tax exempt as the INS insurance was arranged and paid by the parent. The Indian tax authorities analyzed emails between parent and subsidiary and concluded that Adidas had placed its insurance on evading Indian taxes. In 2011, they presented Adidas India with a tax bill based on the full $20 million payment, not the $10 million they received. There are differences in the legal and regulatory systems of the domicile and host country where the fire damage occurred. Please, post your comments on this case study below in the comments section. Conclusion the use of insurance by international businesses and multinational companies, with practical case studies, have been discussed in this video. Multinational companies also referred to as transnational corporations, are international businesses that operate in several states or countries. Multinational companies are global business organizations that undertake and manage business activities with significant investment across national boundaries. I hope the video is educative and beneficial to you. We love to hear from you. Kindly post your comments below in the comments section. If this video has been educative and beneficial to you, then, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Thank you for seeing the risk management of everything videos. We love to hear from you. Please post your comments and questions in the comments section down below. If you are new here, Make sure to subscribe to our channel, Risk Management of Everything channel, and press the notification button so you can be notified when we upload new videos. Thank you.